sorry for the long delay. The wife and I moved into a newer, much smaller apartment, and it took time to get things rolling again. The economy sucks, and in this town, it's particularly nasty. It's awesome to see how big the thread has become. I haven't been able to catch up to it entirely, but there are some really good stories in here. I also totally got mentioned in the same sentence as 50 foot. I mean, holy shit. But you guys don't want to hear how my days have been going. You want meat. My mother had an interesting way of interpreting old fairy tales and folklore for myself and my sister. I wouldn't call it outright, uh, malevolent, but she had a knack for making us terrified of things that normal kids find pleasant or joyful. The Tooth Fairy was one of these things. I understood later that the Tooth Fairy was some sweet old winged lady who sneaks in, finds a tooth under a pillow, and switches it out for a coin. Nice broad. We had Chedamoof. Chedamoof was a scrawny little man thing that looked sort of like a skin cat, and had a black filthy crust over it. Its eyes were bright orange, and its mouth was very wide and filled overflowing with yellow teeth it had taken from children who didn't brush their teeth enough. The way mom told it, if you neglected certain oral hygienes, this little fucker would come into your room in the middle of the night, sit on your chest, and wrench your teeth right out, then stuff him in its own face. This was, I think, partially her ideal way of getting us to brush our fucking teeth. When we lost a tooth, we could put it under our pillow and it would be gone the next day, but we didn't get a fucking quarter. We just bought ourselves a bit of leeway. I never met the thing as a child. I was pretty good at brushing my teeth. Later on in life, however, I managed to get myself in a nasty situation that ended with me losing most of my teeth. Thanks to shoddy repairs and a deep-set infection, not long after that, I lost the rest of them. Painful thing. The hurt is bad, sure. But losing the shape of your face is even worse, I think. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror, couldn't smile, something I've always been in the habit of doing in even the most desperate of times, and eating became a chore for some time until I got my replacements. Some creepy shit had started to happen at my old home that facilitated my leaving it with haste. I've told you of the doppelganger. That unnerved me. But worse is when my wife came upstairs one day to see me fussing around with some books in our bedroom closet and gave me the weirdest look. She had just spoken to me in the kitchen moments ago. I was standing down there with a jar of peanut butter in my hand and asked her to come over and open it. She laughed it off and came upstairs to find her shoes so she could head out to work when she came across me in the closet looking for my books. We laughed about it and joked about deja vu combined with her general absent-mindedness, giving me the abilities of teleportation. In truth, I was pretty worried about it. This thing had given me a definite sense of malice and threat, and the fact that it was also targeting my wife caused no small amount of anger. While she was at work, I got out a lot of my old things. My ghost jars, my little strips of paper with things written on them bag of old rusty nails, and some coins I've swiped from various places. These things are stuff I've had since I was a kid. My personal weapons to engage in weird little wars. I doubt there is any real power in them. I don't think anyone else can take one of my ghost jars, shake it, and make something bad run screaming out of the room. But they work for me. I got voodoo on the living room and doorways. Not the full nine yards but enough to make me feel a bit safer. The wife was a bit amused by the sudden appearance of a lot of plainly weird shit, but she knows me well enough to know there's something to it. I threw out the peanut butter as a precaution because A, I have had a hard time eating that shit anyways due to my artificial teeth, and B, fuck that peanut butter. Nothing much happened for the next few days after that, really except the hot and cold taps switching sides on occasion. I can't honestly say that's what they did. My memory is, simply put, ridiculously bad. But I kept getting it wrong. I even wrote a letter H on my right hand one night, just so I'd remember which side was which when I hopped in the shower the next night. It didn't work. Reminds me of when I was a younger man. 
I used to write a big R and a big L on my respective hands before I would go about doing patient care that shift. I found it hilarious. My patients found it horrific. I like to think that they secretly enjoyed my humor after they stopped worrying about my competency. I'm meandering. Anyways, the final event that solidly got us up and moving was a chance meeting with an old friend of mine I'd never actually met as a child. The nights had been getting colder, the cats had taken to sleeping with us, worming their way under the blankets and keeping our feet warm. The wife was solid zonked. She has had a hard time passing out, but once she gets there, she's out. I had taken my teeth out and dropped him in a cup on the bedside table to fizz overnight, so I could give him a good double scrubbing in the morning. I know it's probably gross to think about, and honestly, it is pretty gross. But at least it's an old war wound I could pretend isn't there at times, which is nice. Some people lose entire fucking limbs. I just got my teeth pulled out. I'm sleeping pretty solidly, dreaming about small women with large tits when a clinking sound brings me up and out. At first, I figure it's one of the cats on the end table drinking out of the cup with the fizzy water and my teeth in it. I turn a bit and get set to go back to my sleep and my comfortable dreams, when I'm struck by how weird things have been lately. It gave me the most terrific little chill up my spine. How the hell, after the shit I've seen, could I just let something like that slide without checking? I wonder if there isn't some part of our brain that just quietly chooses to ignore that shit as a safety measure. Mine almost works. I almost went back to sleep. Instead of that, I sat up pretty quick, reached over, and flipped the lights on. Now, this light on the end table was right next to the cup with my teeth in it. So when the light went on, and I saw what I saw, my hand was right the fuck next to it. Wretched little skin cat body, and a head like one of them capuchin monkeys. He's sitting there on his heels, the same way Filipinos sit on their boats. Feet planted, ass resting on their calves. He doesn't have skin. Or maybe he did a long time ago. He's made out of raw meat and covered in scabs. Looks like a fetus caught some sort of bubonic badness and broke out in lethal acne. And he's fishing out my goddamn teeth from that cup. Little raccoon hands. When the light goes on, his head pops up and I'm locked onto those eyes. They were orange, yeah, but roomy, and covered in some sort of weird half-closed membrane. Mom wasn't kidding about his mouth. That thing was giant in comparison to his stupid little head. This warbling slash of flesh, filled with what I knew to be teeth, but initially thought of as broken yellow crayons. Fucking Cheddar move, stealing my goddamn teeth. He didn't really react to me with any sense of alarm, just sort of stared at me, then went back to fishing for those teeth. I didn't move. Couldn't, really. It's that lockup, the cold freeze you get when shit like this happens in the dead of the night. He pulled the top piece out and pecked at it with his little raccoon fingers. I get the impression that he knew this was what he came for, but something was wrong. His gestures became frustrated, he banged my dentures against the lip of the cup and twisted them. He then gave a little shudder and brought his eyes up to mine. They had the most hilariously depressed look in them. He couldn't do shit with what he had. We stared at each other for a couple of minutes before I turned the switch off and went back to sleep. Fuck that little guy. If he wants my teeth, he can go find them. The next morning, my wife asked me what I was doing with the light that night. It had sort of broken her dreams up, and she half noticed it, wondered if it had actually happened and if everything is okay. I muttered something about varmints trying to steal my teeth. Yeah, I actually said varmints. And over the years, it's gotten easier to say shit like this without rolling my own eyes. Having a beard helps, I think. I can't imagine a clean-shaven guy saying shit like that. We didn't talk about it after that. But she caught the weird undercurrents of my voice, I suspect. And after that, we pushed forward the date of our move. I got rid of a lot of my old shit in the transfer. I have a feeling 
some of it might have been making things a bit more difficult than they otherwise would have been. Besides, I've got issues. I know this. And I figured, some of those things probably weren't making my issues any better. The new place is small, cozy as hell. I don't get the creepy feelings here at all. It's nice. I hope it lasts a while. Until then, no newer stories. I'll have to dig a bit deeper back and see if I can't come up with something interesting. Or call Tony and see if he remembers anything in particular.